Okay, so one of the things that we need to do on a daily basis is we've got to practice the basics. Um, so as we learn more and more uh, techniques, math, uh, algebra, whatever it happens to be, we need to make sure that we're practicing that every day. Um, we're not going to be doing you know, formal tests or anything, but we do want to make sure that we're not losing the things that we're learning. And so what we're going to do is, and I'm going to, to go through, we'll do another video on actually writing the application that's going to do this, but we're going to write an, a Python application that's going to help us practice the things that we want to practice every day. And so to get started, I want to go through the basic processes that we use every day when we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and doing a little bit of basic algebra. So in this video, we're going to cover addition and subtraction. The next video will go over multiplication and division, and then we'll get into a little bit of algebra. And so what I want to talk about are the concepts for addition and subtraction. Now, when you're, when you're going through the different uh, problems and things that you're going to be, you're, you're going to be dealing with the rest of your life, there are some times that you just have a simple add and subtract situation where, where you're given a problem like what is two plus four. And so all you're going to do is add those numbers up. Now we're assuming that, that at this point that you've had a little bit of addition and subtraction. So, you know, the general concept of how to add four plus two. Generally the best idea for if you're going to do these manually, and you can only do this for smaller numbers, but you pick the bigger number and you just start with four and then you say five, six. So that gives you two. So if you start with a bigger number, you don't have to count as many times to get up to it. And there really is not very much point in counting one, two, three, four, because we're just going to start with four and add two. Now, the problem is, is that we could have a situation where we are given a problem that looks like this. And the, the problem with this, and, and in this particular situation, this is so simple that we don't really, it's not really a big deal. We could, we could just put an equal sign out here and say that that's six. But what happens if we got a problem that looks like this? 246 plus 787. Well, now to add this up, it takes a little bit more work. Now, there's a number of different ways to go through adding numbers. Um, one of them is to start from the left and work our way to the right. Now, that's not the way that I was taught. It's not the way most kids were taught earlier in school, but I think that's one of the things that's starting to go through school now. And so to add from left to right, we have to just add the hundred column of this. And so if we look at this, we, we got seven plus two, so that's 900. So we already know that we're sitting around 900. The problem is, is that we then have to hold on to that nine and then we've got to add four plus eight, which is more than 10. And so now we have to make sure that we make the nine a 10. We have to add, carry that one over. And, and so you can do math that way and you can actually do math rather quickly that way once you get good at, at thinking about that. But to me, to learn math, it's much easier if you do it the older way, which is the way that we were taught. And so to do that, in addition, all we're going to do is we can't do addition looking at it like this. It's easier to just take this number and put it underneath the other number. But when we do that, the, the proper way to do this is to start with the, the far right hand number and the far right hand number and write them down. So we're going to put seven under the six. Now we're going to take the second number and we're going to put it under the, that we're going to take the third number and put it over here. Now, at this point, we're just going to add. And so we're just going to work from right to left as we're working this. And if the number that you add up happens to be more than 10, we're going to carry that one or two or whatever it happens to be. We're going to put it up here on top and add it in the next column. So right now we're looking at 13. So we can only put one number here. So we put the three, the one that makes up the 13, we're going to put up here at the top. And so that makes 
8 plus 4 is 12, 13 again. So we're going to put a 3, we're going to bring the 1. So 7 plus 2 is 9, 10. So the answer is 10,033 or 1,033. So the, the problem, and, and here's another example of why you have to write it the way that we wrote it. So let's say that we have 2,003, 4, 5, 6, and plus 7, 8, 9, 1. Well, as you can tell, there's more digits here than there are over here. But doing the process, we're going to take the far right-hand digit and put it under the far right-hand digit. We're going to take the next one and put it here. We're going to take the next one and put it here. And the next one and put it here. The reason is because we have to make sure that we're adding these numbers in the column that they fit in so that we don't get this thing out of, out of whack. If we were to slide this over and put the 7 over here, then we're going to add up a completely different number. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about here in the, the addition section, and we'll, we'll get into more of the other ways of adding numbers as we get a little bit farther along. Right now, it's just important that you know how to line things up and add one column at a time as we go across. But the thing that's a, a, important to understand about addition is that it doesn't matter if I have 789 plus 289. It doesn't matter if I put the 289 here or if I put the 289 on top and, and add them up this way. Addition makes no difference as to which one's on top and which one's on bottom. Generally, we try to put the bigger number on top, but it's not, it's not a requirement. It, it, it'll still work. They just have to line up in the columns. But now let's talk a little bit about subtraction. Well, subtraction works exactly the same way. So if I said, what is 7 minus 2? Well, I know that 7, 6, 5, that's going to give me 5. So it works the same way as what we were doing with addition. We're just working backwards. So another way to think about that is if I, if I start at 2, the lower number, how many times do I have to count to get to 7? So we go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 5. But what happens when I tell it that I want to do 2 minus 7? Well, in subtraction, this is a completely different number. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's say that we have a number line, and we're going to put 0 right here in the middle. And this, anytime you don't see a sign out here in the front of a number, it means that it's a plus. So 2 is 1, 2. So we're going to set 2 right there. But now we're supposed to subtract 7. Well, 7 is more than 2. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to go 1, 2. And now we're going to go to a negative 1, a negative 2, a negative 3, a negative 4, and a negative 5. So if we count backwards 7, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So every jump is, a, is one character or one number, and so we end up with an answer of negative 5. Well, it's a little complicated if I have to draw a number line every single time I do a subtraction problem, so here is a better way to think about this. If I, if I go ahead in, in, a, in a situation like this, I go ahead and draw a line underneath my smaller number, and then I take the sign, the negative, and I go ahead and write it. I go ahead and put it over here. Even though I don't know what it is, I go ahead and write it. And then I move the bigger number to the top because in the subtraction problem, the bigger number always has to be at the top. So at this point, I can just say 7 minus 2 is 5, and that negative sign that was over here on the bigger side of the problem is already there waiting on me. So the answer is negative 5. So let's take another look at another example. So let's say that we have um, 789 minus 1,650. So at this point, I'm going to take the negative sign. I'm going to move it down here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line under the smaller number. I'm going to put my minus sign. And then I'm going to write the, the 1650. But I got it again. I got to line everything up just like we did in our math problem. So or in our addition problem. So the zero goes first. The 5 goes next, the 6 goes next, and the 1 comes out here by itself, which basically means I have a 0 under there. So 
Now, to work this problem, we have to borrow. And to borrow from one number to the next, all it means is, is that you can't subtract zero, 9 from 0. If I don't have any, I can't subtract 9 from it. So I need to borrow from the number before it so that I can make that 0 a 10. So if I borrow the number before, I bump that up by 10. So, but the problem here is you'll notice that the five is smaller than the eight, which means I can't borrow from it. The six is smaller than seven. I can't borrow from it, which means I got to come all the way over here to get the borrow. But we're not really going to worry about that because we know the bigger numbers on top. We know the smaller numbers on the bottom. We've already brought our negative down. And so all we're going to do is borrow one number at a time. So we're going to say borrow from this number to here. That's going to make this 10. 10 minus nine is one. Now, I need to borrow again because five is actually four because remember we borrowed one from it. So the five became a four, but four is less than eight. So I need to borrow from the column before it. So we're going to make that four a 14 because we're going to add 10 to that number. And so that becomes a 14. Now I got 14 minus eight <clears throat> and that becomes six. And so then we come over here to this column and we say, well, we had to borrow from the six. So it's actually a five now. So, but five minus seven, I can't do that because five smaller than seven. So I need to borrow from over here. So this becomes a zero. This becomes a 15 and 15 minus seven is eight. And so we brought our negative sign down. So all of everything works. So the answer to this problem is a negative 861. So when you're doing subtraction, you always have to have that number up on top. Now what happens if we don't have that second number be bigger? Let's say that we've got 1,540 minus 500 and let's say 502. Well, at this point, we're just, we're the, the minus sign isn't important because this number is smaller. So all we're going to do is bring this down. So we're going to say two, zero, five, because the only time that we bring this negative sign down here is when the first number is smaller. In this case, it's not. So we, we ignore the minus sign. So we write it down here. we got our minus. And so now we just go through and subtract. So again, 10 has to borrow. So this becomes 10 minus two is eight. We had to borrow from here. So that becomes a three. Three is bigger than zero, which means I don't need to borrow for that column. So three minus zero is three. And then, oh, and, and so that kind of resets the borrowing. I borrowed from here, which means this doesn't need to be borrowed at all. So five minus five is zero. This didn't get borrowed either, so it just comes down. And so the answer becomes 1,038. So the, the process of subtraction is to line the, the problem up and then subtract out each column. If the top number is smaller than the, big, the bottom number, then we have to borrow. But we're just going to borrow from that column and know that the number before it becomes one less. Even if it's not big enough to borrow from, we're, we're going to make it one less. And so, and then we just keep working across. If that's smaller than that, then we have to borrow from the next column. This would become a four. But in this situation, we didn't have to do all of that. But that's all there is to, to subtraction and addition. Now, here's a, here's a secret. If somebody walks up and they say, hey, Jacob, what is this number right here? plus this number right here. We don't really care how big this number is. All you have to do is write the number out. So we're going to say six, two, five, one, five, one, and, a, and add them. We're adding each individual column. So the, the don't be intimidated by how big the problem is because you do the math exactly the same, whether you're doing addition or subtraction, you start at the far right hand side and you work your way across. So the length of the numbers has no relevance whatsoever to what the actual answer is going to be.